Good morning and welcome to this Tuesday in the 18th week of Ordinary Time. So we have this beautiful scene in Matthew's Gospel from the 14th chapter. Jesus coming to his disciples, walking on the water in this night where the sea is stormy. Here's what it says. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus came toward them, walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. At once Jesus spoke to them, Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, Come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. One thing to note here, uh, which just came to me this morning as I was reflecting on this, is even after this act of faith, or this moment that strengthened their faith to be able to say, truly, this is the Son of God, they will continue, they will continue to need repeated experiences to really come to a full, mature faith in who Jesus is. And of course, they will also need the gift of the Holy Spirit to give them that faith that will make them bold and certain in their knowing. This is often how our faith grows as well. God will often prove himself he will reveal himself in the day-to-day -day things of life. And it's amazing how quickly we will doubt again, that we will struggle to trust the Lord. And so like the disciples, we will need repeated experiences of God revealing his goodness, God revealing his providential care, and this will strengthen our faith. When Jesus addresses them, he says, take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. When he says, it is I, another more simpler translation of that is, I am. Now where have we heard that in the scriptures? It takes us back to Exodus. This is the name that God gives to himself when Moses asks him what he is to say to the Israelites if they ask him who sent him. And God says, tell them, I am sent you. Now this, this phrase that is used in the scriptures, uh, those who are way more scholarly than I, uh, will say that this is a difficult phrase to translate. But in the Catechism, it gives a couple options of how that can be translated. One is, I am he who is, or I am who am. And perhaps one way to understand this title of God is it's, it's God's way of expressing not only that God is a mystery that we cannot diminish or fit inside our own concepts. Otherwise, God would not be God if we could reduce him to our own limited human understanding. But it's also a way for God to say, 
I am self-existent. I have always existed and I have not come into existence through another. In fact, it is God who always has been, who is, and always will be. And he is the cause of everything that exists without himself being caused by anything or anyone else. This is why he's God. But more importantly, what this reveals is that God is unchanging and always present to all that he has created. God is the one who sustains all of creation, who keeps all of us in being, in existence. But it also means that God is present to each one of us at every single moment. God is unchanging. As St. Paul said of Christ, Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. What is beautiful about this, when it comes to faith, it's good to know that our faith does not make God present. And I know that we all know this, but it's good to say it. Our act of faith does not make God present, but our act of faith acknowledges and opens us to the one who is present, the one who is. And so, when we go through life as these apostles, and we come upon situations that make us afraid or make us doubt, rather than using the fear and the doubt as a springboard to renew an act of faith, like Peter, sometimes we obsess or focus only on the fear, only on the doubt, and then we fall into the lie or the illusion that God is not more powerful than the fear or the doubt. This is the lie that comes into play here. And so it's very important that we understand, first of all, that because of our fallen human nature, it is very common and normal to be afraid and to doubt. But as scripture teaches us, and as Jesus clearly shows in the Gospels, he wants us to take those opportunities when a fear arises or a doubt comes up to make an act of faith. One way to further increase this understanding is, is beautifully expressed in Psalm 139. There's this one part of it that says, O oh God, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your face? If I climb the heavens, you are there. If I lie in the grave, you are there. If I were to take the wings of the dawn, and dwell at the sea's furthest end, even there your hand would lead me, your right hand would hold me fast. And so we see throughout the Gospels the importance of the gift of faith and that we exercise it all throughout the day because even though God has made us without our consent, as Augustine rightly says, God will not save us without our yes, without our willing cooperation. This is why Jesus will often say, be it done unto you according to your faith, according 
as you have believed. And it's the lack of faith, as it says, that sometimes hindered Jesus from performing certain miracles and certain healings. And so let us thank God for this gift of faith that we have received. Let us pray the Holy Spirit to strengthen that faith. For Jesus said that even the faith the size of a mustard seed is able to move mountains. Is an opening large enough for God to unleash his power into our life? And so God bless you, and I'll see you tomorrow. Amen.